In this video, we're going to go over the Lab 12 class data analysis. All right, so what we got here is our first, we have our class data, we have our worksheet here on the left, and we're going to be calculating the mean of the, each group, young, uh, Parkinson's disease, and old, and uh, the mean standard deviation and coefficient of variation. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, since we got this here, let's just, uh, for organizational purposes, make it a little easier on ourselves. I'll put it, uh, why not, right here. Okay. There we go. Uh, paste function didn't work from my, the regular paste function didn't work, so I had to do that. Um, okay. Uh, why don't I just go ahead and do it also for the next question. Cool doesn't have to look perfect. There we go. Just organization, making sure things look nice, that's all. And then we're going to copy and paste it in on later, so. Cool. Let's go ahead and do the mean for the old and the uh, Parkinson's disease and then young uh, Parkinson's disease and old. It's just a little bit of typing things out. Got to make sure we only highlight the correct ones. Cool. And then we'll do standard deviation dot s, standard deviation of the sample. Cool. And then coefficient of variation, CV, that is our standard deviation divided by the mean. Cool. So it tells us just how much variability is there from standard deviation versus the mean uh, by taking the standard deviation divided by the mean. Uh, so if the standard deviation was quite large, like larger than the mean, that then that would mean it, there was a lot of variation. And then so here we can see, oh, there's you know not much variation in the young, a lot, a little bit more in the the Parkinson's disease disease are actually twice as much, relatively, uh, in the Parkinson's disease group, and then also in the old, a little bit more than the, the young, but uh, nowhere near as much as the Parkinson's disease. Young, these were healthy people, young healthy people, college-aged, uh, or a little bit older, and then old were what we typically think of as older adults, um, but they are healthy. And then we had the Parkinson's disease group, which had the same age as the old group, but had Parkinson's disease. Cool. Let's do this for Shannon. Entropy question two as well. Except we're not going to do coefficient of variation. So average. Wait, wait. I got to highlight the correct thing. <laughs> Always got to catch ourselves, make sure we're doing the correct thing. All right, cool. And then standard deviation. I was just double checking when I was going up and down with that just to make sure I left a, um, I didn't overlap any of these, didn't highlight one that wasn't in the correct group. Wait, need to make sure, put a parenthesis in before highlighting. There we go. Cool. So for the means, standard deviation for the groups here, we have Young had a middle compared to the old and uh, middling compared to mi the old and the Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease was much higher, a lot of information in there. Um, but the standard, in the standard deviation, it's twice as much standard deviation for both Parkinson's disease and old comparatively. So, huh, kind of interesting. 
um, the mean for the old healthy group is way young, is way lower than the Parkinson's disease group. They both have a large standard deviation, though. All right. Okay. So let's start investigating with some plots of this, just to see what the data looks like. We're going to do it for both the time and also Shannon Entropy. One of the nice things, though, compared to our previous ventures in this, is we have groups set up for this already. And this will make it much easier because we don't have to copy and paste this anywhere. I can just go ahead and highlight this. Ox and Whisker, and it's right there. I don't have to do any of that crazy moving stuff around, transposing stuff. Yeah, perfect, nice and easy. So it looks like our chart, we can get rid of everything below 8 or 0.8. So let's put in for our minimum as 0.8. Okay, there we go. Uh, hmm. All right, we can probably go to 0.9. Let's just do 0.9, get a little bit rid of a little bit more. All right, so this chart looks pretty similar to what we see here, sorry, here, in that means we uh, are all pretty close. We had a little bit lower one here with this bar, um, but the mean for the um, pedestrian, uh, not pedestrian, the for the uh, Parkinson's disease is a little bit higher than the mean for the young, and then old is a little bit lower. Again, this is stride rate variability time. See a lot more variation here, a little bit more than the young, but and it's lower. Cool. Let's give that a name because we're going to make our next one group and Shannon Entropy. All right, so there's a little bit more dead space here as well. Let's go minimum four. Not 45, four. All right. Cool, so we have the young, we have our Parkinson's disease, and we have our old. So it looks like the young is pretty much entirely within this, this older group. Um, the Parkinson's disease group doesn't touch it at all. It's much higher. Seems like there's more information content there, though. Um, some small just aside about information content. Information content, we did say usually you see a loss of information content, but uh, with a breakdown of things. Um, but it's not always the case. Uh, it does mean there is a change in the signal, though. A change in the signal. Why did it change? What? what is different about the signal. So we see that here there might be something, especially with young to our, um, from, old, from young to our Parkinson's disease group. So let's go ahead and name this Shannon Entropy Group by Group. Cool, so that takes care of up to question number four. Let's go ahead, we're going to skip over five, you can do that one on your own. We'll look at number six. So we're going to do a ANOVA, single factor. All right, so here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take these values and we're going to have to transpose them elsewhere. So we're going to have to move these over here. This is going to be young group. Parkinson's. And I'm going to do PD, Parkinson's disease, and our old group. Let's get that down to two digits. There we go. And it doesn't matter. It's just for presentation, for look. That's all. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do the data analysis. Sorry, here we go. Let's go ahead 
and choose the correct range. We're in columns, labels in the first row. Alpha 0 0.05, and I'm calling it ANOVA. Cool, so we got young, Parkinson's disease, and old, and we got five counts of each. Perfect. And we see we can reject this null hypothesis. P value, we report the F statistic. Cool. Awesome. Whether we're going to, whether it was or wasn't, we're going to reject, we're going to do it anyway. We're going to uh, move on to the next stuff. But here we can reject it. So cool. Now we're going to do some t test comparisons. So first one is assuming unequal variances. Okay. Let's go back to data, data analysis unequal variances, second hypothesis. First one, this is between young and old. Hypothesize mean difference, zero, labels, 0 0.166666666 and seven, let's just, that's enough, cool. And I'll just y dash old comparison comp. There we go. All right. So the main reason we're doing unequal variances, and we can see it right here. Let's take this divided by this. So if that is above four or more, four time four or more greater one of the variances is four times more than another. We cannot safely assume that the variances are equal. So that's why we have to do an equal variances not assumed or unequal variances assumed. So here we can see that we cannot reject this null hypothesis. It doesn't even come close. Not even close. All right. So young and old failed to reject. Let's go ahead and do now young to um, Parkinson's disease. Here, unequal variances as well. So Parkinson's disease, we have young, yes, that's the young one. It's the young column, cool. Young and Parkinson's disease. All right, 0 0.016667, you know, that sort of repeating is number six. So we can reject this one. We have, we are able to reject this one safely. Cool. Again, 4.2. So um, the other way you check that is with like an F test, um, but it, both will tell you the same thing. So here we're fine. That's why we did equal variances not assumed. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the last one. The last one is equal variances assumed for old and Parkinson's disease. Equal variances assumed. old and Parkinson's disease. Got to type this stuff in again. Labels, one, six, seven, good enough. So our O2 PD comp. Okay, so we have failed to reject. We're, you know, we're almost there. We're very close. We're almost there. Um, one of the things you can also see is that this variance, they're almost the exact same. So uh, it's where it's very safe to assume equal variances here. And with that, we get a pooled variance. So with the unequal variances, we don't get a, a pooled variance because we violated that assumption. Well, we, we'd violate the assumption if we did. Um, so we don't get a pooled variance. So that makes you wonder why, how we're going to do... Um, adjust our Cohen's D. So for equal variances assumed, we're going to do it as normal. So Cohen's D 
equals abs this minus this divided by square root pooled variance. Cool. So we get a rather large one, large Cohen's D. Very nice. And then um, and then oh sorry, and then what we get is uh, or what we have left is the last things to do what these sigmas in here are standing for. those are standard deviations. so um, yeah, okay. So what we will have to do now is, We'll have to do this Cohen's D. We're going to make an adjustment. We're going to use the midpoint, and I make sense of why we have to do that here. Um, but we can't use our normal pooled, vari uh, pooled variance because we don't have that. Cool. So what we'll do is. We're going to take our variances, we're going to find the midpoint, A, oh, sorry, ABS, this minus this, divided by square root, and then another parenthesis, and what we'll do is we'll add our variances together. Divide by two. All right. That's a rather large effect size. Cool. And then we'll do the same thing, but we'll just make sure we use the correct stuff here. So that's what I'm going to copy. We're at D7. D7. And here we get a rather small Cohen's D versus young to old. And that sort of backs up. Uh, even if there was a backs up, you know, this stuff that we can see here, even if there was a difference, it would be rather small. Cool. All right. So, yeah, there's not much of a difference in the means. So we saw that. Um, again, if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact me, uh, and if not, or contact your instructor, and if not, this is the last video that we'll have, and uh, so probably won't see you in the next one because there will not be another video. Good luck with the rest of your semester, though.